What's up guys, Johnny May coming at you with a quick one minute tip and today I wanna to talk about three exercises that you can use to practice cocktail jazz piano. Now when it comes to cocktail jazz piano, oftentimes students will learn the basic chords in the left hand and then a basic scale in the right hand and then they're just basically told, well hey, just make up some lines with this scale. But in order to make up lines, you need to know how to practice creating lines. And so that's the idea behind this lesson. I'll be teaching you three amazing exercises that will help you create more interesting lines when you're improvising in the cocktail jazz style. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to solo over the most common progression used in jazz music. We talk a lot about this in our courses at pianowithjohnny.com, but the first progression you really should learn if you want to play cocktail jazz is called the turnaround progression. Okay. It's not only a great progression to listen to, but it's also used on lots of different songs. So when you start playing jazz standards from lead sheets, uh, you'll be able to just jump into the solo comfortably. All right, I basically put together two ways that you can play this, one for beginner jazz students and one for more intermediate uh, uh, jazz students. The first is called beginner shells. And basically here's the idea, is we're gonna take our four chords in the turnaround and we're gonna play this very simple root to chord in our left hand, just using three notes. It's really, really simple. Okay, go ahead and play this with me. Uh, first chord is C major seven, C up to E in the B. Okay, this is the third and the seventh of a C major seven chord, okay? And this is what I call the stride ballad pattern. Basically, it's a root chord pattern, all right? Next chord is an A minor seven. We're gonna grab this A root below, G and C on the right hand, really nice. This is the third and the seventh of the chord. These are called chord shells. If you wanna do a deeper dive on this topic, we have courses on chord shells. A D minor seven is gonna be here. D up to F and a C, that's the third and seventh. And then the G is gonna be F and B, the third and the seventh of the chord, okay? Now, when you're playing chord shells, it's important to put your chords near each other. Notice that we don't have to move that much between the chords. This is called good voice leading. So this is something to be mindful of. All right, uh, we also have a backing track. You can practice this with the track. This is what it sounds like. Here we go. Really, really nice if you kind of want to practice playing with a bass player, a little drummer, and just kind of lock in that feel, okay? Really, really nice. By the way, the backing track is downloadable at pianowithjohnny.com, and the sheet music you're seeing on the screen is also downloadable. Plus, you can change the key with a couple, basically one click. You can put it in any one of the 12 keys. I'll put a link to that below. I do want to move you on to the intermediate advanced approach. If you have some experience playing jazz, you want to play more interesting chords, and I want to teach you these beautiful rootless voicings, okay? So the rootless voicing, C chord is played like this. Okay. This is called a C6-9 chord, okay? And there's no root in the chord. It's a really nice way of playing a C major chord if you want to play jazz. Okay. A minor chord is the next chord. We're going to play it like this. This is called a B voicing. There's no root in the chord. There's no A. But you add a really colorful, colorful note, the 9, which is quite nice, okay? Uh, next chord is called the D minor 9 chord, okay? There's no root, but we have a 9 in the chord. Really, really nice. Three, five, seven, and nine. And then the final voicing is called a G, G7, but we're adding some notes to this. We're adding a ninth and a 13 to the chord. Okay, these are called rootless voicings. If you want to learn more about these, you can check it out, deep dive on the concept at pianowithjohnny.com. But this is a really nice way, again, of kind of laying down a nice foundation for when you are improvising in the cocktail jazz style, okay? Uh, again, you can play with the backing track. Go ahead and try playing along with me, and then we're going to dive into the three exercises in the right hand, okay? Here we go. Two, and here it is. A minor. D minor 7, G7, okay? Really nice. You can add little swing notes, little 5 1. See that in my left hand? 5 1. Basically, before each chord or before each root, you can go to the 5 and then to the 1. 
and that's a really nice way of playing it. You can also change your bass notes to be lower or higher if you want to go for a really low bass note, that's fine. Generally, I recommend to students to stay in this chord range from E to E if you want to play bass notes. This is a great bass range. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this lesson, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel here, hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Now, I want to get to the most exciting part of this lesson. This is called the Gospel Scale. This is a scale I use a ton. We have tons of courses on this topic, and this is probably one of the most universal scales that you can use if you want to play basic or improvise over virtually any style, okay? Here's how the gospel scale goes. This is also called the major blue scale, in case you were wondering, but I like to call it the gospel scale is a, is a great uh, term there. Okay, here's how the gospel scale goes. That's your gospel scale. Okay, the notes here are C, D, D sharp, E, G, and A, okay? From this point, I'm, if I want to continue the scale, I go back to my thumb on C, and I just play this up the piano. Okay, make sure your thumb hits the E, and thumb is always on the C, okay? You can practice this up the piano, you can practice this down the piano, thumb on the E, cross over th finger three to the E flat, and then finger three to the A. Okay, that's going to be the key going down is your finger three crossing over, okay? Before you get into the exercises, I would just get familiarize yourself with this scale, kind of come up the, the piano like this, and just get comfortable and try to build some speed, looking for those cross uh, over points and the cross under points, okay? You just play it on your own and just get comfortable with the notes. You want to see these notes light up, okay? Now, Let's get into exercise number one. This is a, a simple exercise. If you're more of a beginner in jazz, this is an eighth note exercise. And you know, when you're improvising cocktail jazz, guess what note, type of note you're playing the most often? It's an eighth note, okay? Sounds like this. Okay, I'm playing pretty much all eighth notes. You really need to have this technique down. Here's how the exercise goes, guys. We're gonna start on C, we're gonna go Basically play the gospel scale up until we get to a high C. We're gonna hold there and then come down. And we're gonna hold here, okay? That's it, it's a very, very simple exercise. And what it's doing is it's helping you practice using all of the notes of the piano while you're playing the accompaniment, okay? So once you have the scale, you have that eighth note feel, one and two and three and four and one. Okay, by the way, these are swung eighth notes. Don't play them straight. One and two and three. No, no, it's swung. One and two and three. Okay, once you got that, you can add that left hand in, and here's how it comes together. And then we take it down. I'm using some simple chord shells in my left hand. You can also use the more advanced voicing. Okay, really, really nice. Okay. You may have heard me do a little slide there. We're gonna talk about slides here in a minute, but you wanna be really, really comfortable with this eighth note scale. Once you can do up and down the piano, then try to make up some little lines using eighth notes. Here's how I might improvise over this. lines have a start and an end point. This is really, really important as you create lines. If you guys want to do a deeper dive of this topic, by the way, we have the Jazz Ballad Soloing Challenge at Piano with Johnny. I believe this is an hour to two hour long course where we do a much deeper dive on how to create lines. But I want to teach you exercise number two. This is a triplet exercise. Here's the sound of triplets. They really move a lot more. And this is a really, really important note value to have in your playing. Okay, how do you practice triplets? You're gonna play three notes per beat up the piano using the gospel scale or the major blues scale. Here's the feel. One, two, 
three, four, one, two, three. You're gonna do a hold there and bring it down. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's it, those are triplets, okay? Three notes per beat. Once you have that down, add the left hand. Here's how you'd play it with a more beginner left hand. We'll go slow. And down. Okay, notice I throw that little quick five one in. Okay, that quick five one lines, lines up with the third triplet on every beat. Next, I want you to try improvising with triplets, okay? So you, again, you wanna create some nice simple lines. Remember, a line has a start and an end point. So you wanna leave a little gap between your lines. This is how this one would, would sound. You can mix this with your eighth notes. Guys, I wanna teach you the final exercise. This is an exercise that uses slides, okay? Now, when I play this style, I love to slide notes. Okay, and how do you practice slides? Well, this is a slide scale exercise. What we're gonna do is practice slides up the piano and then down the piano, okay? Here's how it goes. Basically, on your gospel scale, okay, you're going to slide the E. I like to use one finger for my slide. And then you can slide the A, okay? And you can just play these up the piano, E and A, okay? Now, what you wanna do is play the scale using slides up the piano, and here's how I do it. I slide the E with two. Thumb on the G, slide the A with two. Thumb on the C, slide the E with two. Thumb on the G, and you play this all the way up. With the hold on E, and then we bring it down. Makes sense? Now you can use other fingering. You don't have to use this fingering. Sometimes I'll go two, three, two, three. That's fine, okay? It's just a bigger jump, okay? So you can use whatever fingering feels more comfortable to you. And then once you have that down, go ahead and play it with the left hand. Here's how it would sound. Okay, and then you can go ahead and play with the backing track and this, try, this time try improvising with it. Okay, here we go. Two. Here we go. All right, guys, this concludes this week's quick tip. And if you enjoyed this lesson, I wanna encourage you to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 600 step-by-step -step lessons in cocktail jazz, Latin jazz, jazz swing, improvisation, blues, a ton of other styles, theory, technique. Also check out the Piano with Johnny membership. This gives you unlimited access to our entire course library. Plus you get to be part of our live monthly events, including our live workshop lessons, our live Q and A's, where you can ask me your questions, our student assessments where you can send me a video of your playing and I'll give you personalized feedback. We do weekly challenges for our members and we have an amazing community. So go, go check out pianowithjohnny.com and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.